Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. I'm Warwick and you're watching Gas Tax, the channel that's here to help you figure out how to build your dream garage. And today we're working on my TW200 and we're doing some upgrades. So let's jump right into it. So if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by. And if you're a long time subscriber, always good to have you back. Just a friendly reminder, only a couple days left to enter in for the September giveaway of a $100 Amazon gift card. All you gotta do is be subscribed to the channel and comment on one of my videos or all of my videos in September. The more you comment, the more chances you have to win. That's it. So guys, today we got a quick little couple updates for the TW. Firstly, we are going to be installing a rear rack. Now this rear rack is massive. It is big. It is sturdy. And the reason for that is because this bike is going to be on the back of my RV. It is going to be treated as a recovery bike. But also, when I need some firewood, this rack is going to help me bundle up all that wood on the back of the bike so I can bring it back to camp. Next up, a big guy needs some big pegs to put my big pores down on the bike. So I am upgrading the pegs on the bike, much bigger and beefier than the current stock ones. Now, because this bike is not going to be used all the time, it's really just a recovery bike. I also want to hook up a trickle charger uh, connection to the battery. And since I have to remove the actual seat to install the rear rack, we're going to do that too. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. All right guys, first we're gonna start off with removing the seat. There's two little 10 millimeter nuts below, pretty straightforward, helps out. And then there's a little <laughs> suction cup right here that sticks to the tank. Never seen that before, but it seems to work. I'm gonna put this aside. Alrighty, so now the battery's exposed. I do have a new battery. When I bought the bike, I actually uh, went to the guy's house and the bike wouldn't start. So funny enough, he was going to replace the battery because he was gonna keep the bike. He decided he didn't want to keep it and he was going to sell it, but he wasn't going to give me the new battery. Uh, but when I got there, it wasn't starting. So he's like, oh, okay, cool. You can have the new battery. So glad I got that battery in there. So let's hook up the battery charger or tender wires right here real quick. So that can be done. And then the rear rack actually mounts to uh, the seat holes. Oh no, actually right here. So let's do that. So guys, just a reminder, every single thing you rarely see in my garage, there is a link down below or in other videos. If you have a question about anything I'm using in my videos, let me know. If you want to purchase some things that are in the videos, there's normally the link below if it's on topic. If not, I'm sure I've made a video about it then. So be sure you check out all my videos. But here we go. Here is the tender uh, that I use, you know, the generic tender plug that plugs in. I have one of these on all my motorcycles. I live here in Chicago, so six months out of the year we don't use them. So if you don't have one of these on your motorcycle, I'm sure you're wasting a lot of money buying batteries every year. So pretty simple. Let me just unscrew this battery, clean up the terminals, um, and then we can just install that and figure out where we can tuck it away. One thing I utilize in the garage all the time are these little magnetic trays that hold uh, your loose nuts and bolts. So that's great. I have my chair nuts in there already and now the battery ones will be in there for when I need them. That way you can never lose your stuff. Organization is key to uh, projects in the garage, be it uh, a simple oil change or um, you know, a, a huge build. If you don't have your tools organized, if you don't know where your stuff is, you really will never be able to work efficiency, efficiently. Let's be honest, uh, everyone wants their project cars to be done much quicker um, and keeping your stuff organized is really the key to that. I always do the negative first. Uh, people tend to do different things all the time. Do what you want. So I know a lot of you guys uh, work on things already. But I hate this stupid floating nut on the back of batteries. Just use one of these. You can bring it up to the nut or the bolt and it should help uh, install these much easier. There we go. That was all we needed. I'm just figuring out where I want this wire to be. Well, I think it'll be this side. Exhaust is that side. I don't really want it to get in the way of the exhaust. Here's a perfect hole for it to go down. And that way I can leave it clipped on right here. And that way it won't get in the way of the chain either. 
that is all squared away. So on to the next project, which will be the rear rack. Now this rear rack is from cycleracks.com. I will put a, obviously a link down below, but it is very straightforward to hook up. It includes only the two bolts you need down here and it utilizes current bolts on the bike. So let's take those off. All right, now that that's off, we are going to remove uh, the bolt holding the rear foot peg, and then these actually get bolted onto that area. What I like to do, especially everything on a motorcycle, I use my blue lock, lock, lock tight. Uh, put a dollop of that on, and then you should be good to go. Alright guys, well that's pretty simple, and look how much storage it is. I can easily put a bundle or two of wood on here, or a nice brick of beer. So uh, let's move on to the foot pegs, but I'm going to raise the lift because I don't like bending down. Almost lost the camera. That wouldn't have been good. If you guys want to start a YouTube channel, uh, budget six times more for cameras, because that happens a lot. All right, guys, while I'm at it, I'm also going to do the air filter change. I have that, and it's right here. I may as well do that. But let's talk about the foot pegs. Now, these foot pegs are tiny. Uh, they look like they're from a child bike. And when I grab the actual parts here, um, <laughs> it says these will fit the Peewee 80, Peewee 50, and then the TW200. So uh, when I got a bike, I was five years old, my first motorcycle, and I actually had a, a Suzuki uh, 50. I think it was a D, D, DRZ 50. My second bike was the DRZ 90. Um, but anyways, yeah, these are, these can fit these Peewee 50s. So it is for a child's bike. I guess this is also a child's bike. All of us uh, adults have to play somehow. If you can look right here, uh, they are about four times bigger and longer and wider. So that's perfect. I'm not trying to do any adventure trails with this. I currently have a DR650. That is my go-to adventure bike. Um, if I'm going long ways and all the way off-road, that's perfect. I did also upgrade all the things I'm doing here on that bike. Another bike I do have is called a, uh, a Euro sidecar bike. It is an off-roading version, engageable two-wheel drive. That bike I do take off-roading, um, but that thing's a beast. That's for another day. If you want to see videos about that, be sure to check out my channel. I've got plenty of videos on that. Now, jumping back to this, to remove this, this is a simple cotter pin. I do not have replacement cotter pins, so I need to save these. Uh, so that's something I should put on my list to buy. All right, so that is out. Let's see if the spring just jumps out at us. No, perfect. All right, what I like to do at this point is um, I'm just going to grease this up. I'm not really going to clean it. I don't care for cleaning these uh, unless they're really corroded. So while we're talking about bikes here, I do have a couple other bikes. I have a 2015 uh, Triumph Scrambler. That 2015 Triumph Scrambler, I custom did everything. I redid everything. There's not a bolt on that bike that I did not touch and I made it uh, how it looks now. I love that bike. I don't get to use it as much as I would like because I've got too many other toys. So that's a problem. Um, and then I have another bike. Oh, I can't pronounce the name of it. It is a Japanese trials bike. The reason I bought a trials bike is because I want to just, you know, improve my riding. Uh, I think it will be a, a great bike to uh, just help out learn, learning how to ride better, um, 
and so on. So that's why I bought that bike. I tell you what, it's a pain in the butt because if you don't use it over that, that, that uh, winter period in Chicago here, then kickstarting that is annoying. <laughs> it also leans the other way on the kickstand, which I find kind of weird. Never looked into why. But those are the bikes I have. All right, so I didn't want to bore you with installing that, but as you can see, that is installed. So one thing that makes life easier is if you're looking here, um, through this hole, you need the spring to stay. And whenever you hold it, it falls down there. So I found something to just hold the spring in position. So there is a hole. And then once I put it in through the slot here, uh, on the far side, on the opposite side that the, the cotter goes in, I just put the screwdriver in just to hold it in position. Then I push the actual screwdriver out with the pin. So hopefully that helps you guys. Uh, these are annoying, but you'll get it. Pretty simple. So I'm going to do the other side, then we're going to do the air filter. All done on both sides. That side was easier for some reason. That's just how the cookie crumbles. Uh, I believe the air filter is in here, so let's get taking off. <sighs> 15 year old plastic is never good. There we go. The right tools for the job always help. And the other right tools make things faster. <laughs> This smells very saturated. All right, so good thing I'm changing this. It looks pretty worn. All right, I just checked the other one, how bad uh, the foam actually was. And as soon as I just like touched it, it just disintegrated. So that is a good thing I ordered this. You know, general maintenance. Oh yeah, this one feels great. Plop that in there. It just sits in there, then there's this thingy, and then, oh, looks like you can lay it all in here, makes life easier. Okay, that just clips in here, nice, and uh, this just sits in here, and let's put that back together. All right, well guys, thanks a lot for tuning in. As you can see, this was very easy. I didn't stop the camera much. Uh, when I did, it was just so I didn't have to bore you guys. But uh, I'm gonna leave you with two other tips, or one other tip. Always get these. Um, these are great, any kind of uh, tool hand wipes. Uh, they're great. I never wear gloves. Firstly, I hate dirty hands, but I hate he uh, sweaty hands more. So I never wear gloves but then I wipe my hands down with these and they get nice and clean. And some of my tools did get grease on them. Uh, the way I keep my shop organized is the way everyone should. Obviously nothing is perfect and I do screw up sometimes, but I wipe down my tools with the same one of uh, I use for my hands, keep my tools fresh and clean and lasting for a long time. So guys, I have a bunch more projects on the TW200 to do, so be sure you like, subscribe, and leave a comment if you're looking forward to some other things, or let me know if I did anything wrong here. So until next time, thanks a lot, and I'll see you then.